You cannot get into ketosis when your calories are at 1,200 or 1,000 or 800. Okay? You got to bring the calories up. Yep. Now, is that because of the stress that it's causing and we're just constantly dumping sugars or is there a different reason for that? Well, because one, because the body will, if your calories are too low, it's either going to stay, it's either going to force neoglucogenesis Mm -hmm. or it's going to go oxidative. So you can't measure it. Okay, so, so you're burning, not but you're not the- getting the benefits. Remember, if you're oxidizing fats without ketones, you are not protecting your muscles. The yeah. reason that is the research was to protect the mechanism. The whole, the- yes, it's the protective yeah. mechanism. That's why people get all messed up when they're not paying close enough attention. If I'm in a deep deficit and I'm not making any ketones, Houston, we got a fucking problem because mm-hmm. I've got nothing to protect my muscles. That's what people don't get. And when we watch women, I'm watching ketone levels even when they're eating carbs. And what I'll notice is in even my top athletes, they'll keep burning ketones, 0.2, 0.3, even when they're eating the carbs. But then when you start seeing metabolic problems, you don't see almost no ketones. Right. That's why we started using looking at the GKI score because it's a better index. Funny story, not really. When I was at the Hybrid Health Summit and I knew my numbers weren't good, I was in front of my team and I was showing them how to use it. And we were talking about some of this stuff. And my ketone came back and it said LO. And I go... <laughs> I go, it's been saying point one, which ain't good. And they're like, well, LO's got to be worse. I'm like, yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> so. I mean, dude, you were such a hypochondriac that weekend. You were like, my ketones. Blah. I'm like, well, you stress it over. It ain't going to yeah. help you out. Burn all that. I mean, I thought I was staying pretty calm, but I, I mean. Know, it was pretty funny, though. Obviously. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, like, so, again, and then, um, so, the th- third reason is your is your protein's too high, or, of course, mm-hmm. or you're so, um so your protein or carbs are too high. So you're either getting, you're either getting um, uncounted carbs, maybe like sugar alcohols. Because kind of remember too, like if it, if it messes with the beta cells or the alpha cells, even if it's not it food. Allow you get any ketosis. Right. So you have to be a little careful with that. And then, and then the last one and the one that we don't realize, and this is the one that's important that nobody, nobody talks about. And that's why like the clinics that we work we work a process of getting your body. We train your body to burn ketones. It, your body, if it's not done it in years or ever done mm-hmm. it, it doesn't know how, it doesn't remember how to do it yeah. until it is forced Possibly. to do it because we weren't doing it since childhood. Like, you know, there are things that you have on your body. 40 year old version was right. If you don't use it, you lose it. Yep. It was right the whole time. And so what we have to recognize is, is that when I, first apply this new stressor, um, it can have a pro adaption, but it can't be, it might not be fully effective or fully take because it takes an acclimation period that if you have somebody that's particularly stress resistant or has sugars that are higher, it's going to be harder to get them there. We see it all the time. So you don't think it has anything to do with cortisol being high from the low caloric intake? Well, and then I that would be dumping, I, I, the uh, epinephrine causing. Yeah, you, certainly. Okay. Yeah. So All if right. your sugars, remember, I took, if calories are too low, mm-hmm. that's where that comes into play. Yeah. Which okay. I explained was numbered okay. in the, in the okay. two. I missed it then. Yeah, yeah. So, but you're exactly right. And so I don't want to see that. And so we kind of really get people in a more of a relaxed state when we can. And we get those, we get to bring the calories. Yeah, because, you know, I get this with my team when I'm educating them. You know, we're looking at different sugars and we use a keto mojo too and they'll be like oh why aren't we just pulling them right into ketosis right away and i'm like well you know they've been eating 1100 calories we're, we're going to get their calories up higher we're going to yeah. calm the body so they're not just dumping sugars and then it'll work and you know they go oh yeah i've tried that right away before i've tried to put someone right into ketosis and it didn't work and i'm like yeah that's, right. that's why yeah, I gotta and, and, then the part that's and we see this a lot with coaches though right they the part, try it right away the part that i cannot stand <clears throat> The part that they have a hard time in research because they're not associating people what mechanism they're in. They're just lumping everybody that mm-hmm. tries ketones together. If you look at any of the data on ketosis and ketosis diets in comparison to like um, higher protein or like uh, higher carbohydrate diets, you have a greater degree of variance in the data. Meaning that when it was effective, it was really effective. And then when it wasn't, it wasn't at all. And that's because of this cellular mechanism. And they're not differentiating populations based on that. Because if you did, you'd find out that the people that hit deep ketosis got the best. I'm telling you, you'll hold your muscle and you'll burn a lot of fat. Oh, yeah. right? Like it really works. Uh, and then once they're keto adapted, I don't, the other part about the carb community that I don't appreciate and what I've learned, because I was very judgmental. Your performance in the gym will reduce on 
in deep ketosis, but actually you can train just as hard and get better results in your body composition if you stay there. And then once you're acclimated and you're burning ketones, then you can train hard. Just like in a fasted mm -hmm. state, mm -hmm. if you're burning a significant amount of ketones, your muscles are protected. Now yep. go ham. Let your body get adapted. Don't be an idiot and jump into your seven days a week yep. moving into keto because you're not burning the ketones yet. You're going to be doing a lot of oxidation. That's such a Good point. Right? Amazing. Let acclimate and then go ahead. I, I can just, I'm just going to like know what like number he said that because my clients always want to go right away and I'm like, no, we're not in ketosis yet. Like, just give me a second. Wait, you know? serve up your muscle and just eat it with yeah. a spoon. I got to ask just because I'm going to put my tinfoil hat on. Now I'm going to bring this towards the <laughs> close for the silver <laughs> tide. We're ready for it. Was, if I'm putting together this puzzle, semaglutide, keto, fasting how does is this where semaglutide could really really shine when you have to work someone up and you get them in a good spot and you're trying to get them to go from a sugar burner to a fat burner you use a semaglutide because the usual thing you have with people with keto is they don't like eating that way like a real keto diet not the ones where it's like i go to chipotle and get all the meat and cheese i want it's actually like a real one if you get people into a good gki and you leave them there long enough over time they can eat high amounts of protein and still be in ketosis just like an athlete male you yeah. can actually raise the protein every yeah and as Adi talks about in this book like over yeah. time you can start bringing that protein up and that's what i do after a while yeah. so do you think semaglu so if we're gonna wrap all this up on semaglutox we like went all there's an the ethics there's a, there's a bottom line I want to get across as we get to that. Yeah, no, yeah. that's why I wanted to kind of start going towards on that yeah. because I, I feel like where you're laying, like this is a complete offense for people and they're seeing like a whole new world. To yeah, it because so here's the here's the deal. Yeah. Easy, easy line, ethical line, ladies and gentlemen, ethical line. Anytime that anything works great, it will be abused, right? The internet's yeah. one of the greatest things on the planet, but the second largest thing it's used for is pornography, <laughs> right? Does, yeah, does, well, do, porn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, does that make internet bad? No. no, it means use it appropriately and it can be wonderful, right? So the same thing goes for semaglutide and anything like yeah. it, right? Semaglutide is an amazing tool. Stupid humans will do what stupid, stupid humans do and they will abuse it. But the problem is, is, what we don't realize is that if I try to lose weight with a client, here's when I know something's wrong. When I go into a fasted state or I don't get in, a, or I'm tracking ketones and they don't drop while I'm dieting, or don't increase while I'm dieting, yeah. or sugars don't, blood sugars do not drop. And I, when I say sugars, not just fasted, we need to be checking two hour postprandial yeah. sugars. I developed a method for this. We call it glycadian rhythm testing. It's so important that you check sugars two hours after they eat. I'm gonna be honest with you on this podcast. I don't give a fuck about your fasted insulin or sugars. I don't care. I wanna know how you metabolize food. And the only way to know how you're doing that is when you eat food, not when you haven't eaten for eight to 10 hours. Although that's a nice number. I like it for a lot of other reasons. Don't get me wrong, but it's not the key marker. The key marker is two hours after you eat. Where did that energy go? Is it still sitting in your bloodstream, unstored or unused? We got a problem. I don't care if you look like a fitness athlete or you're 200 pounds overweight. You want it to be back within four or five points to the base? Well, my argument has always been is that your metabolic efficiency score is your blood sugars. Mm -hmm. Why at 15, why at 15, why at 15 years old, at 15 years old, you're in your seventies, right? Then as you get a little bit older, you're in your eighties. Why do we see 25 year old fitness athletes in their nineties and the hundreds? Why, why are we seeing people with weight loss issues, hundreds, hundred and tens, hundred and twenties? Why, why are we seeing this? No matter, you can debate with me what sugar level's bad or not. All I'm telling you is the higher that your average glucose gets sitting in your blood two hours after you eat is your metabolic efficiency score. Glucose is reserved energy. Nobody can die, deny that. And if your reserved energy starts getting higher and higher and higher, even though you're not at a pre-diabetic level, it still means what? You're becoming less metabolically efficient. Period. End of argument. Right? I don't care what anybody tells so you. So what do you like to see the two hour at though? All right, you gotta, we gotta bring it back it, to a base, don't so, we? Yeah. So, so at least if you are a very mesomorphic athletic male or female, you might sit a little bit higher because your body's always feeding those muscles with some mm -hmm. sugar. So you might sit low, max low 90s. Mm -hmm. Optimally, I would love to see people that are like ectomorphic females sit high 70s, low 80s. The average individual optimally is like 85 mm -hmm. and it coasts. On that. And there's data that backs me up from Harvard research. Yeah. So all these people out there, by the way, that are telling you that like glucose spikes matter or that it's, it, it's bad for you is full of shit. Glucose spikes are great. Now, if you're a type two diabetic, now they matter how high they go. 
That's where they're getting the research. But in normal human beings, you want a glucose spike. Uh, no, it those, it's called growth factor. Those 24 yeah. hour growth, like CGMs are great, but they're also a curse sometimes. Right. I'm so, like, you're, those are normal to have those spikes. Can't I don't them. care what your sugar level is when it spikes at one hour. I want to know what it returns to at two hours because that tells me how well you took the energy in, broke it down, got it where it needed to Story, go, and yeah. used it. Yeah. That's what matters. 